Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India to this session of the class. So, we will be basically now looking into the solution of um, cross flow, um, uh, cross flow filtration system. It, this will be valid for reverse osmosis, ultra filtration as well as the micro filtration. We have, we are, we are looking into a two dimensional mass transfer boundary layer analysis and in the last class we have seen how the concentration profile in the mass transfer boundary layer will be solved and then this concentration will be evaluated at y equal to 0 in order to get an idea of CM that is the membrane surface concentration and how it varies with the hydrodynamic of the system. And then once we get that, then we will be hooking it up with the uh, transport loss to the porous membrane. Let us look into that. If you look into the solvent flux in the membrane, in membrane we, we get V w is equal to L p del p minus del pi and we make it non dimensional by defining V w d e we multiply both side by d by d. So, it will be L p d by d delta p minus delta pi. So, therefore, this will be nothing but non dimensional permeate flux a p w is equal to let us say this parameter is b. This is an, so, we, we, we write everything in the form of non dimensional parameter. So, P w is V w d by d is non dimensional, uh, it is a, it's a Peclet number, it is basically non dimensional permeate flux and B is a non dimensional parameter L p d by d. So, this equation must be valid at every location of module or channel. Okay. So, this will be the equation that will be satisfied everywhere. Now, let us look into the other equations. So, uh, if, if, you, if you remember that uh, um, uh, what is the equivalent diameter, we have, we have defined earlier that equivalent diameter is nothing but 4 of half height for a thin rectangular channel. Now, if you remember that uh, we have defined V w as V w h x divided by u 0 d square to the power 1 upon 3 is equal to a and um, uh, let us write it take it on the other side a u 0 d square divided by h x to the power 1 upon 3 make it non dimensional. So, this becomes p w is V w d by d. So, a u 0 d square d cube and h x d cube to the power 1 upon 3 and we will just put h is equal to d by 4. So, this becomes 4 to the power 1 upon 3 a u 0 this d will be cancelling out d square divided by x d to the power 1 upon 3. So, now if you convert this into um, uh, uh, into Reynolds and Smith number this will turn out to be uh, to uh, and, and then this will be raised to the power x to the power 1 upon 3 on the other side x to the power minus 1 upon 3. Okay. So, now let us put in the non dimensional form. So, P w will be 4 to 4 to the power 1 upon 3 a u 0 d square by x d and make it uh, oh, oh, uh, and this. Okay. In this we it is, is x is already included. So, we can take x out of this. So, it becomes 
we are, we, if we make it uh, uh, make x non dimensional then this becomes this x will be outside so x to the power minus 1 upon 3 so 4 to the power 1 upon 3 a u 0 d square by d times l where l is the channel length this becomes x to the power x star minus 1 upon 3 there will be a square. Now, what is this number? This is a again non dimensional number this is Reynolds Smith d by l if you can open it up u 0 d by nu nu is the uh, 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 mu by rho. So, this nu by d this is d by l. So, this becomes u 0 d square by d l. So, this becomes p w is now becomes 4 to the power 1 upon 3 a Reynolds Smith d by l to the power 1 upon 3 x to the power minus 1 upon 3. So, this will be the relationship how permeate flux is varying as a function of a uh, as a function of x and one can get an expression of a now as p w divided by 4 to the power 1 upon 3 Reynolds Smith d by l to the power 1 upon 3 x to the power 1 upon 3. So, now let us write down what are the different equations we are having different equations we are having is this will be expression of a p w will be osmotic pressure model b times 1 minus delta pi by delta p and you will be having the expression of i the and c m star will be 1 over 1 minus a r r i and what is the expression of i i is 0 to infinity exponential minus eta cube by 3 minus a eta d eta. Now, let us uh, write down the different equations number 1 this will be then 2 this will be 3 and this will be this will be 3 and this will be 4. Okay. So, let us write down the difference. So, this, this four are equations. Now, let us see how we do the computation of the system performance and predict the system performance. Now, it will be a now next step is we will be doing an uh, you know numerical calculation. So, at a particular x location at a particular x star we guess a value of C m star guess C m star once C m star is obtained then is guessed then from equation 1 evaluate P w from equation number 1 this is the osmotic pressure relationship. Once P w is known then one can get the value of A evaluate A using the p w at that particular x location from equation 5. So, what is our equation 5? In the previous uh, slide we write this is the equation 5. So, once we get the value of uh, a evaluate a from ok we will, we will evaluate a from so 5 is not required this is obtained from there only. So, we will be we will be getting the value of a from equation 2. So, because we, we have obtained the value of p w from the osmotic pressure model we insert that here Reynolds Smith d by l are the operating conditions d by l is geometric factor 4 is a numerical value extra we are evaluating at that particular x location. So, therefore, we will be evaluating a from equation number 2 and once we evaluate a then we are in a position to evaluate the definite integral i from equation 3. So, once we evaluate the definite integral i from equation 3 then from 
we can we can evaluate we can recalculate calculate C m star from equation 4. So, let us look into the let us go, go back to the equations at a at a particular x location we have guessed a value of C m star. Once we guess the value of C m star we can evaluate P w because delta pi will be function of C m star only all the other parameters are known to us. So, once P w is evaluated we can get back to equation 2 and evaluate the value of a. Once we evaluate the value of c, we will be getting back to equation 3 and we will be evaluating the value of i. And this in integration has to be evaluated numerically using a trapezoidal rule or a Simpson's rule. So, this infinity will be replaced by a higher value let us say 5 or 10. So, let us say put let us put it a value of 10 and evaluate the value of integral, then we will be putting another value of you know 15 or 20 and we will be evaluating the value of i numerically using trapezoidal Simpson. If the answer of the two values will be different uh, will be different in the decimal places let us say one or two decimal places then we can take the infinity as the value of 10. Okay. So, once we evaluate the value of i we have already evaluated the value of a then we can calculate C m star from equation 4 and then we will check whether this C m star is coming close to the guess value or not. So, 6 is check absolute of C m star calculated from step 5 minus C m star guess is less than epsilon. This epsilon can be a small number. If, no, if, if it is not, then we have to guess the value of C m. So, if not, then we have to guess another value of C m and carry out this loop. If yes, if yes, then we have to again go to the go to x star plus delta x star, the next x location and redo these calculations iteratively. So, in the process what we will be getting? It, so, there will be two loops, one will be the inner loop where we will be calculating the C m star from the algorithm at a particular x location then we will be going to the next x location x plus delta x and redo the calculation iteratively. And likewise ultimately what you will be getting? Ultimately we will be getting C m star as a function of x star. So, once you know the C m star as a function of x star, then you will be getting the P w as a function of x star and C p star as a function of x star. So, uh, so we will be getting the profile of permeate flux. non dimensional permeate flux as a function of x star and permeate concentration as a function of x star. And then this will be again we have to do a Simpson's rule and doing a length averaging. So, average length average permeate flux will be nothing but 0 to 1 p w x star d x star and C p length average permeate concentration will be 0 to 1 C p x star d x star. So, therefore, one will be getting the, le, the length average permeate flux and permeate concentration and get the can get the system performance as a function of operating conditions. So, this way the osmotic pressure control can, can be can be predicted to a um, uh, to a completely uh, can, can be can be utilized completely predictive way. So, for a well defined system when where we know the uh, uh, solute diffusivity, solute um, uh, uh, the geometry of the system perfectly, everything is known, then this osmotic pressure control filtration model can be utilized to get a system performance. Now, let us go a little bit ahead and let us look into the mass transfer coefficient and then we will see how this mass transfer coefficient will be estimation of mass transfer coefficient will be helping us in reducing the rigor of calculation further. So, let us look into the length average permeate flux and evaluation of mass transfer coefficient. So, length average permeate flux will be given as as we have described here 0 to 1 p w x star 
d x star. So, I will uh, we have we have the expression of p w as a function of x star we insert there uh, that and see how much we are getting 4 to the power 1 upon 3 a Reynold Smith d by l to the power 1 upon 3 0 to 1 x star to the power minus 1 upon 3 d x star and ultimately we will be getting as p w bar is equal to 2.38 a Reynold Smith d by l to the power 1 upon 3. So, we will be getting the expression of a as a function of length average permeate flux as a is equal to 0.4 to Reynolds Smith d by l to the power 1 upon 3. So, we call this as lambda 0.4 to lambda where lambda is equal to p w bar divided by Reynolds Smith d by l to the power 1 upon 3. This lambda is also known as the suction parameter. It is a non dimensional suction parameter, it indicates that, uh, that the, the wall is really porous and if the wall is impervious p w equal to 0 and one will the suction parameter will be 0. F therefore, for an impervious conduit when there is no wall porosity p w uh, that will be indicated by p w equal to 0. On the other hand if we have a wall suction there will be a definite value of p w bar the length average permeate flux and that will be there will be definite value of lambda not equal to 0. So, in case of no, no suction there is no membrane place is placed in the conduit in the flow conduit lambda will be equal to 0 in presence of membrane lambda will be assuming a different a, 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 a finite value. So, next we will be looking into the expression of mass transfer coefficient. So, the if we if we go back to the expression of in, in the uh, indefinite integral 0 to infinity the definite integral infinite integral 0 to infinity as exponential minus eta cube by 3 minus a eta. So, I am replacing a uh, by 0 0.42 lambda eta d eta and now we define the mass transfer coefficient as k c m by c naught is equal to minus d del c del y at y equal to 0. That will be a typical definition of film mass transfer coefficient and k becomes. So, we, may, we make it non dimensional k c m star minus 1 is equal to minus d we replace del c del y in terms of non dimensional in, in terms in terms of similarity parameter eta. So, this becomes u 0 h x d to the power 1 upon 3 d c star d eta evaluated at eta equal to 0. Now, if you really do that and and uh, we, have, we have already seen that c m star is equal to nothing but the parameter k 2 and this d, d c star d eta at eta equal to 0 will be the integral constant k 1. So, mass transfer coefficient can be replaced as minus k 1 divided by k 2 minus 1 u 0 d square divided by h x to the power 1 upon 3 and k x k as a will be if you, if you if you replace the value of k 1 and k 2 this this becomes 1 over i u 0 d square h x divided raised to the power 1 upon 3. Now, we will be defining the Sherwood number in terms of k d by d and this becomes the Sherwood number becomes 1 over i u 0 d square over h x to the power 1 upon 3 and if we now replace everything in the non dimensional form in the non dimensional form this becomes Sherwood as a function of x star is 4 to the power 1 upon 3 i Reynolds Smith 
d by l to the power 1 upon 3 x to the power minus 1 upon 3. So, this factor 4 comes from uh, conversion of half height into the equivalent diameter and l comes from non dimensional version of x star, x star is defined as x by l. So, we can get the length average share root number, length average share root number will be nothing but 0 to 1 s h x star d x star and this becomes 2.381 divided by i Reynolds met d by l to the power 1 upon 3. So, this is the expression of share root number length average share root number in the case of uh, mem membrane channel where the walls are really porous. Now, let us look into the various simplified cases for case 1 p w equal to 0 then p w bar equal to 0 that means, there is uh, no suction and impervious conduit. Now, if we can really find out the expression of i now zero, this will become 0 to infinity exponential minus eta cube by 3 d eta this becomes 1.29 and if we really put it there then average share root number becomes 1.85 Reynolds Smith d by l to the power 1 upon 3. Now, if you if you can you know recognize this equation this is nothing but the Levex equation. So, for the for for uh, that is coming from the heat and mass transfer analogy for the impervious conduit. So, we, we get back the Levex equation if we put uh, wall suction is equal to 0 or the suction parameter lambda equal to 0 when there will be no permeate flux um, coming out of the system. So, next next case case 2 when wall suction is not equal to 0 p w bar is not equal to 0 then that means that you will be having a membrane channel and into the system. So, what we will be doing we will be uh, if you if you look into the value of lambda lambda the is nothing but p w bar divided by Reynolds Smith d by l to the power 1 upon 3 for a typical value of uh, uh, lambda in membrane system for microfiltration system p w bar will be quite high. So, in that case we will be having a high value of lambda in click in case of reverse osmosis p w bar will be quite less. So, we will be getting a less value of lambda and typically this lambda varies from 0 0.5 to 10. Next what we will be doing we will be evaluating the integral i as a function of lambda numerically and then we fit a curve of 1 over i as a function of lambda. If we really do that then we will be getting share root length average share root is equal to 1.85 Reynolds Smith d by l to the power 1 upon 3 1 plus 0 0.32 lambda plus 0 0.02 lambda square minus 8 into 10 to the power minus 4 lambda cube. Now, this will be the expression of share root number in a membrane channel when the, when the walls are really porous and now this is this expression if we uh, put put the no suction case no suction means when lambda equal to 0 when lambda equal to 0 we will be getting down getting back the Levex equation. So, this is the expression of shadow number by incorporating the value of you know suction parameter in the membrane wall. So, if you remember the Levex solution uh, that was developed in 1885 and the modification of the porous wall the Sherwood number will be is uh, has been developed recently in 1997 in late 90s. So, uh, it will be what it indicates that the suction parameter increases the mass transfer core coefficient of Sherwood number and uh, what is the extent of increase the extent of increase will be given by this factor and depending on the value of lambda the, uh, the porosity of the wall or permeability of the wall the suction parameter will be enhanced the share root number compared to the no uh, impervious conduit or the when the suction parameter will be equal to 0. Now, next we will be seeing how to utilize the share root number relationship in order to find a quick calculation of the system performance quite easily. 
So, we will be looking into the faster procedure or algorithm. to calculate system performance using Sherwood number or average mass transfer coefficient. So, if you look into the uh, boundary conditions at y equal to 0, at y is equal to 0, we had V w C m minus C p is equal to minus d del c del y and at the same point we have the definition of mass transfer coefficient as k times C m minus C 0. So, if we consider the all average values length average length average values we will be having that V w bar C m bar minus C p bar is equal to k l bar C m bar minus C naught and in terms of non dimensional parameter you will be getting p w bar is equal to S h l bar r r 1 minus 1 over C m star. So, p w bar is equal to nothing but v w bar d e by d and Sherwood is nothing but k l bar d by d. So, this relation will be giving you the expression of average value of um, uh, wall suction parameter or the permeate flux with respect to uh, with, uh, with respect to length average permeate flux. So, you will be having the length average permeate flux this expression p w bar is equal to bar divided in r r 1 minus 1 by C m star and we have the osmotic pressure model P w bar is equal to B times 1 minus delta pi by delta p. Now, we have the expression of S h l bar average Sherwood length average Sherwood number as a function of uh, lambda which will be nothing but P w bar divided by Reynolds mid d by l d by l raised to the power 1 upon 3 and we have delta delta pi which will be function of C m star. Now, we have two. So, essentially we will be having two equations and two unknown system or the unknowns P w bar and C m star. So, now we have to solve two algebraic equations which are nonlinear. nonlinear and they are coupled. Again this can be solved by uh, using Newton Raphson method iteratively. Therefore, now using the mass transfer so, so what we have seen what we have seen now in the in in the in this class we have seen how to solve the a two dimension detailed two dimensional model for osmotic pressure control filtration and once you get the concentration profile then if you hook it up with the flow transport phenomena through the porous uh, you know membrane then you will be getting a system performance if you do if you if you adopt to uh, an uh, an algorithm which will be giving you ultimately the uh, value of permeate flux and permeate concentration as a function of x but if you remember up to that point we have not used the definition of mass transfer coefficient next what we have done we have derived a fundamental relation of length average uh, Sherwood number or mass transfer coefficient from the first principle and obtain an expression of Sherwood number. Now, using that de definition of mass transfer coefficient, we have formulated the problem once again, but at this time it will be in the terms of le all length averaged quantities. So, therefore, we will be getting ultimately landing up with two algebraic equations. Uh, now, in this case we are not going to evaluate the profile of dependent parameter permeate flux and permeate concentration as a function of x location and then doing one more uh, length averaging by, by adopting Simpson's rule or trapezoidal rule. In this case we have landed up into two algebraic equations directly having two unknowns and one can get the length averaged permeate flux and permeate concentration directly from this equation using the um, uh, Sherwood number relationship. So, that is why 
people used to find out the mass transfer coefficient in any transport co transport problem and then that will immensely simplify the solution of the problem in terms of the mass transfer coefficient. So, that will complete the predictive mode of uh, how to predict the osmotic pressure filtration and osmotic pressure filtration if you remember will you will come across with the in case of the solutes which will be having a low molecular weight for example, salt, sugar, polyphenols, dyes etcetera where. So, we have seen how to uh, in a cross flow system which will be the which will be quite frequently applicable for an industrial scale to model the system in an entirely predictive method. In the next next class, what we will be doing? We will be looking into the importance of the batch cell and how to unstart batch cell and how to model the unstart batch cell quite accurately in a predictive manner using the similarity transform from the first principles. Thank you very much.